Well, welcome to episode number 71 of According to Flint, the podcast. I'm uh, calling this the College Rodeo Overview and Update podcast. Uh, special guest in studio, and we are going to talk about the structure of College Rodeo, the type of kids at College Rodeo, what they get out of it, anything you can think of College Rodeo, because I have said before, I think the week of the College National Finals Rodeo in Casper, Wyoming, is my favorite week of rodeo of the year, and maybe the most underrated rodeo as far as quality of cowboys and cowgirls and production quality, uh, maybe the most underrated in the country. So, uh, Shelby Rasmussen going to join me, the assistant rodeo coach and women's rodeo coach at Montana State University. We are going to uh, review what went on in Casper, Wyoming, and look ahead the future of college rodeo. But first, thanks to our friends at Pendleton Whiskey, and now a word from Montana Silversmiths. Thank you, as always, our friends at Montana Silversmiths, many of us wearing a Montana Silversmiths gold or silver buckle. Remember, every buckle has a story. A lot of buckles given out last week. Buckles, rings, money, saddles, scholarships, you name it. Given as you watch this, it's been been a week or so since the uh, college rodeo, NIRA, CNFR, the sniffer, as we like to call it. The greatest week of rodeo, in my opinion. Uh, This is the College Rodeo Overview episode because I believe that College Rodeo is underrated. I think it's full of talent, and I don't think people understand enough of how College Rodeo works. Uh, So joining me, I'm just going to make her sit here and not talk. The now, I can say now former assistant and women's rodeo coach at Montana State, can't make noise on the table at Montana State University. It is Shelby Rasmussen. We are somehow related. Somehow, I should say this is my daughter Shelby because sure enough, somebody will say, "I don't think they're they don't know how they're related." So, Casper, Wyoming, the home of the college national college national finals rodeo. It's amazing, Shelby, to me. Be and this tells me we need to talk about college rodeo more. But it's amazing to me how many people come up to you or me and say where are they having that this year Mm -hmm. doesn't that surprise you so because in our family we just know yeah it's been in casper for the last 25 years you know that's where it's at and it's where it's been uh having been there the last four or five years now Mm -hmm. off and on not consecutively but last four or five years Now, much like people thought about Bozeman, Montana when it was there, I have a hard time imagining it anywhere else besides Casper, Wyoming. Yeah, it's a really good spot for it. You know, we do a little bit of driving. Our horses are um, at the fairgrounds. The arena is the Ford Wyoming Center, um, the Casper Event Center. Um, But what a great facility for it. And, you know, seats about the perfect amount of people, I think. It's a great atmosphere. Um, It really feels like a big deal when you're there rodeoing and, I can't really imagine it anywhere else. And I love rodeo and then the field house, but there's something about the CNFR and Casper. Yeah, but uh, you name, because uh, people should know, I, you know, people will talk about indoor rodeo arenas and imagine that rodeo is kind of in an indoor arena. It's not. It's a, it's a multi, it's a coliseum, yeah. basically, where they have concerts and basketball tournaments. And it, I, it feels although I like it a little better, it feels a little like the Metro in Billings, Mm -hmm. but a little more fitting. When I walk into that arena and look at the yellow sign, the yellow fence and everything, it's a miniature Thomas and Mac arena. Absolutely. You know, everything's yellow. Like you said, it's, it's awesome. And they, they have a trade show on the concourse and it's a long week there, but it definitely feels prestigious, which yeah. is fun. It's fun to compete there. It's, it was fun to coach there. Too. But I think that's a good goal. I think, I think that's what they have to do. You got to make college kids. They've, everybody's worked hard to be there. Mm-hmm. You have to make it feel like that. And I talked to a couple college kids and I have talked to more than just a couple through the years mm-hmm. that they go to college rodeos through the season mm-hmm. 
And it's a little bit spectators like a high school rodeo. A lot of them they just have and not a lot of people. And so when they get to Casper, it's a little overwhelming. Absolutely. You know, and I think I think it's important that it doesn't feel like another regular rodeo, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's there's some really phenomenal college rodeos throughout the year, but there is something about Casper and those kids that handle it with grace and know how to handle that pressure, and that those are the kids that shine. Do you, and really this just kind of popped into my mind because I think I've taken it for granted. There are some big college rodeos out there. Uh, the three best ones in the country, mm-hmm. I think I'm correct here. Tennessee Martin yep. has one. Cal Poly, yeah. San Luis Obispo yep. have one. And the Montana State University Spring Rodeo. Uh, coincidentally, usually held all on oh, the same, same weekend. weekend. Yeah. Those kids that go to those rodeos in those three regions of the 11, I think there's an advantage. I think Montana State kids... I don't think it affects them as bad riding into that arena in Casper because you've ridden into a sold out brick breeding field house at Montana State, right? Absolutely. Cal Poly kids, same yeah. tennis, and that those regions. Yeah, and you know we can. I don't like. I like to compare the spring rodeo to the CNFR. Very two very different atmospheres, but the atmosphere in the brick breeding field house is unlike any other. You know, I've competed at the CNFR and I've competed at the spring rodeo, and yes, maybe it's not for as big a titles, but the atmosphere itself is huge, and yeah. I think that's a really big um, preparation tool for the kids at Montana State. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Montana State, to this day, I get people. They say, "Where's that call CNFR now?" Your sister calls it the sniffer, and I will call it that forever. Where's that college finals now? And I said, Casper, Wyoming. It should still be in Bozeman. Uh, I feel sorry for people that think like that because I think they probably broke up with a girlfriend 25 years ago and still wish they were with her because that's what it feels like. I don't know that people understand. It's been 25 years. And I, uh, what uh, the Ford Wyoming Center, I think that's technically the name of it now, in Casper shows us is uh, the Fieldhouse in Bozeman is no longer a real modern venue for rodeo and to hold something of what they're trying to accomplish with that rodeo. Yeah, and I think from what I gather talking to people more and more, especially this past week, I'm not sure it's the building that people miss, but I think people liked the feel of Bozeman and the culture and the way that town... Um, was such a cowboy town for that week of the CNFR. You know, they talk about the cat's paw and they talk about the Molly Brown. And I think, I think really that's what people miss more than the, the field house. Cause we have a rodeo in the field house. So when we sell it out, we couldn't sell yeah. more tickets for the CNFR than we do at the, mm-hmm. at the spring rodeo. But Bozeman has changed in the last 25 I w- years. Yeah. Too. That was, I was going to say it, now there is a definitely a still a cowboy culture, mm-hmm. still a strong um, support for the rodeo team, but overall, people talk about man, that little town was so fun, and we'd go up to uh, float the Gallatin. At, yeah, it's a little different. It may not be what the for one. There's not near as many places to park. No. Can you imagine <laughs> or, now or staying there? I yeah. mean, it's it'd be a whole nother level of trying to figure things out for 11 regions you know 50 some schools yeah it, it, it would be it's a whole different ball game yeah. but uh and i can't think you said you drive in casper i can't think of an no, arena no. anywhere you wouldn't have to drive no, your horses and it's not very far way. it's 10 minutes yeah it's so. pretty easy uh you mentioned the 11 regions okay let's talk about this because this is what i wanted to talk about for people who don't understand college rodeo there are 11 regions across the country yeah a hundred, how many schools? 130 like ish yeah. colleges take yeah. part and have college rodeo programs in mm-hmm. some capacity. What is kind of cool about college rodeo compared to, you know, kids come up through high school rodeo. And when you get to the national high school rodeo, everybody talks about what kind, how many rodeos do you guys have? What's your point system? Mm-hmm. Uh, what you, it, it's different. It's mm-hmm. the big discussion at the high school finals yeah. rodeo, yeah. which honestly, I hope I never take part in again, <laughs> the discussion at the national high school finals rodeo. <laughs> Great thing about college rodeo, everybody does it the same. Yeah. yeah um, really, the basis of it is 10 rodeos, um, 
point system is pretty much the same. It varies a little bit. You know, there's rodeos that – there's regions that do mainly one-header rodeos, and there's regions like our region that does mainly – two head one and a short you know so yeah so you get to, to explain to people yes. a lot of people a lot of the places they have small rodeos they come everybody gets one winner wins yeah. you guys do a, a long round and then top 10 do a championship yeah. round so there's points available yeah. that way so it, it's really dependent on the region and it's dependent on the side of size of the region and you know um the travel distance the facilities all of that but really the whole concept and the number of points available and stuff is the same throughout the country which is fun because you get to watch the standings all year and they don't standings don't carry over into the cnfr it's a clean slate but it is kind of a good reference because a lot of the times you know you can kind of watch and it's it's fun to keep track of that and it's fun to you know everybody qualified the same way the top 10 rodeos Uh, five in the fall five in the spring base for the depend yeah yeah. not not every region but no like go all year some have yeah. One in the fall. But. The Big Sky region. Yeah. Montana, the, all the Montana schools and Northwest College. Five in the fall, five in the spring. Try to squeeze them in when the weather's good. Yeah. Try to beat the bad weather. Try to taper yeah. off from the bad weather. But everybody does 10, but you're right. You can watch the standings because then you get an idea who's dominating in a region and who's doing real well. Even though, like you said, those points when you come to the College National Finals Rodeo are thrown out the window. Yeah. And they didn't used to be. No, I agree with it, though. Right? Oh, completely. You have different sizes of regions. I mean, you have the Texas regions that have hundreds and hundreds and, I mean, so tough. They could be a CNFR in themselves. And you have smaller regions that don't even have the 10 schools, you know. So I think, I'm not saying any region... I think every single region is tough at the CNFR. And Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's another thing that's unique is you can't, you can't exclude any of those regions, but but the point spread isn't exactly the same because you don't have the same number of contestants. Yeah. And I re- but I do remember, I, I think there was some, you know, years ago when Montana State won some team titles, they brought they dominated the region and brought all those points yeah. in. So then for a lot of schools, there, not everybody had that possibility to win. No. Yeah. Because and an individual, if you come out and dominate the breakaway roping in the Big Sky region, you could take those points in and then those people had to catch you. Yeah. The clean slate's good. And I think it's a good, uh, my statistics terminology, uh, the college national finals is three go rounds. Everybody mm-hmm. gets three and then a top 12 to a championship round. So those top 12 get four chances to win. I think it's a good sample space to weed out and the cream rises to the top. I think it's a completely, maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but I, gee, you just don't hear, I, never one time have I ever heard the conversation at the College National Finals Rodeo. Well, the way they do it here, it just isn't fair. No, I think the only conversations I've had just to be the devil's advocate a little bit is the rough stock events because it does, especially, you know, the bareback riding, the saddle bronc riding, it does come down to a little bit the horsepower. And I, yeah. and I don't know the solution to that. You know, some I've, I've heard t- a little bit. I talked to somebody last week a little bit about, you know, more of a tournament style um, setup or something like that, I think. But as far as, you know, the fact that it is four rounds helps because it's not – something a draw completely taking you out right. of the short round that's the age-old question in how, rodeo yeah. is how do you fix that when somebody uh, you know I'll, i can pick one in a rough stock he, he clarend in college in texas but a helena montana guy yeah. sam peterson yeah. who's number he, he's in the world stand or something in like the that. world standings mm-hmm. he just never drew that horse no this never yeah. and that's just Mm-hmm. Well, that's the way it goes. A lot of people don't like it to be that's the way it goes, yeah. but it kind of is yeah. a little bit that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I do. But it's just not a huge discussion no. about, you know, there's not that. that. Well, plus kids are a little older. Parents are a little calmer for the yeah. most part. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think there's there's definitely always discussion, and I think it's always discussions that need to happen because I think our sport – a lot of times is afraid of change. And I think what I think (laughs) I don't think the college national finals necessarily needs to stay the same format. It's been for the last, however many years moving forward. But I think right now, you know, Mm -hmm. it's worked and it's fun to watch and it's competitive. And a lot of times the kids that win most of the time, 
the kids that win are the kids that should have won. Yeah. You know? um, There's always that thing. And yeah, probably different than the national finals rodeo. That's 10 rounds there. It, you really don't have room for a screw up. You can't make or, a mistake. You, you can't make a and mistake. You can't, I mean, it used to be even, you know, in the cat, in the timed events, um, you could make a mistake in in the bulldogging or the calf roping. And really, it's gotten tough enough you can't anymore. Yeah. And that's where I could see, you know, moving forward, maybe there is a possibility for some sort of change. I, I can't put my finger on what that would necessarily right. be. But. Oh, you, you know, you, it's always at another round, but you don't have time. You're, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, discussion. I mean, I think these. The, those kind of discussions are healthy in our sport. For so, uh, we'll, let's get to this. She's not here because as the day we are recording this, she flew to Boston for an internship mm-hmm. at the M- at MIT mm-hmm. because she's a nerd. At the end of the week, your sister Paige, lifelong, I won't say lifelong, a goal, okay, how long was it Paige's goal to be the college national champion goat tire? At what well, year in school? S- I mean, junior? since she got to, f- to college. Well, yeah. I'd say junior year of high school, probably. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. That was her. Yeah. What she didn't want to be the national champion barrel racer. No. She didn't want to be the. <laughs> no, I mean, not that it was disappointing when she won the all-around, but that wasn't her goal. It's different. She was the all-around two, two years ago, but it's different to win an individual outright event yeah. title. And it really depends on your goals. I would have killed to win an all-around title. I yeah. would have way rather won an all-around title than an individual title. Yeah. But that my goals were different than Paige's. I, I really loved doing all of the, the events and kind of being spread out. You yeah. Know, I liked the rodeos where I was in four events. That's why I loved college rodeo so much. You know, I'm not, I didn't love goat tying, so it's not like I've really given up my event now moving out of college rodeo, but I've given up a place where I can do all four events, which right. has been hard yeah. for me. Um, but the goat dying event, and a lot of people aren't familiar with it. And when they first see it, they're like, really? Yeah. This is, but at the college national finals, it is the, everybody it's comes the down to watch. and watches yes. and the championship round. They start slowest to fastest. It's one after another. It's Talk about an event. You can't screw up at you all. You cannot make a mistake in the goat time. Like even. Uh, Paige uh, never made a mistake. No, her four times were. Six two, six, six flat, six, six one. one, six flat. And so, yeah, it, it's funny that, like she said, winning a, a goat tying title in college rodeo is like winning the world championship because after college, You're, it's over. That, yeah, and that's what's so cool and so rewarding, I think, about that goat tying title is that's the biggest thing you can win in goat tying. You yeah. know, you, there's not, there's not really a step above college rodeo in the goat tying. And, yeah. and it is truly one event that it's, it is just strictly how hard you work. That That's what I was going to say next. It is, listen, yeah, you got to have a good goat tying horse, mm-hmm. but it's not quite as big of a thing as a great barrel racing horse, or even yeah. in the today's world, a great roping horse. Goat tying horses are very valuable and a great one does unique things. Yes. But it's different. It's way different. It's just different. You can, you guys subbed horses in, you oh, know, well, worked with Paige them for just, two weeks. And yeah. yeah. Paige's horse was hurt all fall. And yeah. she was on a different horse and she still won the region. For That's because she time. can outrun a horse on her feet yeah, almost. But not, uh, maybe not now that she's no. Well, crippled. that's <laughs> one of the reasons go tying ends after college is because most of their knees hurt. Yeah, by that feet, time, my feet still hurt. Yeah, it's it's a tough yeah. one on the body, but it is. And Paige always said, and she tells people at her clinic she does. It is the one event where it is all about how much time. Yes. There was a young girl sitting by your grandma and grandpa. Mm-hmm. After the rodeo and Paige had won and the girl with her parents said, when does she start practicing getting ready for the season? And they said, she, she never, never stops. stops. Yeah. yeah. So, but it just goes to show. So congratulations to Paige. Yes. National champ. Yeah, that was, you. nobody cried. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. That was exciting. And she had to sit through two at the end. She tied and then there was two more to go. And yeah. I never cheer against anybody. Well, sometimes. But not those two girls. They're no. her friends. You don't want to win. And they, 
that's part of rodeo as well. She went and put the pressure on them and they stumbled yeah. a little bit. And they're great girls. And it's cool. I mean, the cool thing about Paige too is she is best friends with every one of those girls. You know, yeah. she was back there cheering for them. And um, so that's. It was fake, but it was. No, she was though. Yeah, she was. That's. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I probably would do it or pretend to cheer for them. Yeah. No, Paige does. Yeah, she, she does. She really does. And yeah. she's as passionate about the sport as she is about herself winning. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about schools because the people I talk to, even not completely unfamiliar with rodeo, but not familiar with college rodeo, mm-hmm. there is not Division One, Division Two, NAIA, junior colleges. There's no division. Those 137 schools or whatever it is that compete, uh, I should know that. That's the whole Google thing we were talking about. That compete in college rodeo all compete against each other. Uh, Let me tell you, here are, in the men, so they give, uh, by the way, congratulations, Shelby. The women's team of Montana State, runner at reserve champs, second place. High hopes, This year, number two is not letting down any high hopes, and it. But that is tough. But number number two, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That was quite a thrill. Yeah, it was really exciting. You know, we had the biggest women's team there. We had eight people, but in college rodeo, you have to pick four people to be on a girls' points team and six to be on a men's. So it doesn't matter if you have the biggest team there. You still have your ten people that you declare as your point getters. and if it would have just been our top four girls or we got to combine everybody's points, um, you know, national championships, all that. But it's really cool to see, you know, those points team, but the girls not on the points team are still as much a p- part of that team. You know, they're, well, they're yeah. keeping points from They're blocking. They, and really. they're, they cheer for each other, you know, all year. It's just really cool to see, and I don't really like – it's, it's a hard thing to you know even explain because it's like, well, these are the four people that were on the team, but no, they were all on the team. The same yeah, year, that's true. They're the all same, they're in the picture. They, the same when our team won the nation. Those other two girls were just as big a part of the team as the four yeah. of us that were on the points team. And I think that's important for everyone to remember, especially those girls. But I think people will look and go, well, yeah, Montana State, they got to be favored. They brought more, they qualified more girls to the college national finals than anybody here. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No. You and so there's the argument. Okay. Uh, I'll get to the kind of colleges that are there, but there leads to a discussion of I'm not saying it it is the way to do it because yeah. I like the balance, but Montana State brings eight. Yep. Yeah. More than any other school. Another school brings four and that's their team. Yeah. Or three and that's their yeah. team if their team there's a lot of yeah. Little technicalities. But, you know, so people say, well, yeah, they had eight girls. They should score more points. Well, yeah, each, the Montana State girls did score a lot of points. You have to pick your four ahead of time. Yeah. So there's that discussion of, here's eight girls. At the end of the week, they pick the top four Montana State Mm girls. They don't do this. Um, Hypothetically. Yeah. One could say, what if they went through, out of all the Montana State girls, they picked the four that scored the most points and that's their four yeah. on the, but that's not how it works. No. And you know, you could really see both sides of it, but I mean, yeah, it's still just four people's points counting, but we had more chances for those four. I, it's a, I, I, I agree with how they do it now, you know, and our four girls on our points team were the four girls who dominated the region this year you Yeah, know, for the most, it, it changed a little bit, but, but really they were the top four point earners in the region page was there in two events and won the nation. Taylor Moykins was second in the nation and has won the nation before. Molly Salmon was there and was fourth in the nation the year before. And J.C. Curran was there in two events, was the reserve all-around champion in our region. Right. You know, that. how do you not put those Yeah, four, you have to you put know? those four. And then one, uh, other girls will score points and then you hear the, oh, they should have put her on the points team. It, you don't. Yeah, go ahead. You, yeah. you pick the team. Y- yeah. <laughs> you, well, so. and you have faith in everybody. I mean... It'd be yeah. fun to put two points teams together. We yeah, you guys could people, add two. Yeah, but um, it's it's interesting and it takes a lot of it takes a lot of knowing your team and knowing the setups that fit each person and just it, it takes a lot of that as well and having faith in everyone in the team. Yeah, you know? and then the men's team is consists of six, six. because men have 
more points. Yes. In today's world of rodeo and the, the tone of rodeo, you got to have rough stock kids and they are hard to find. Especially at a four-year university. Okay, so let's go on to this. The top two, okay, so in the women's, number one. So yeah, Montana State gets second. Number one, national champions, West Alabama. Where the hell is West Alabama besides Western Alabama? Alabama? But that's the cool thing. Here's Montana State, major four-year university, qualifies more girls than anybody there. West Alabama beats them. Because their barrel racers dominated. They had a girl in another event. Or were yeah, they-, they had, I mean, they were kind of spread out. They had three barrel racers in the top five in the nation. And then they had a girl who got goat time points. They had a girl get breakaway points. I mean, it was impressive because the year we won the nation, Montana State, we had 485 points or something like that. This year, we had 590 so you That's scored a hundred and some more points, more than the year, we but won uh, but got second. Mm-hmm. Those girls, uh, uh, what was the uh, national champion in the barrel race? Uh, Tacy Matthews. Tacy Matthews. She's, she's going to make the NFR yeah. if that horse keeps doing that. Yeah. She'll be at the NFR. So that's what you're up against. Yeah. At College Rodeo, that is what you're up against. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so talk. Speaking of who wins the men's team. The men's team, I think there's a little different factor in there, and it's bareback riding, saddle bronc riding, bull riding. Mm-hmm. Rough stock. Yeah. Clarendon College, yep. the national champions. Mm-hmm. Do you know where Clarendon College is? Clarendon, Clarendon Texas. <laughs> and they didn't have, they had, if I'm correct, all rough stock. I don't think they had a timed event person on that team at the same yeah. time. Now, you can look at, you know, the Western Montana here in Montana, he gets hurt right before the college finals. They had a really good bareback rider. Yeah. They were in the team men's team region, the running the whole year. Yeah. They were because there was only like for all year. three the bareback year. riders and theirs was the best. So they'd get automatically first place points. Yeah. Rough stock. There's not as many, so they're not competing against as many kids. And I feel like there's not the factor of, you know, draw horsepower, all of that as much, you know, as, as far as chipping away. Like, your best bareback riders and saddle bronc riders, if they draw good, they're going to win, usually. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot in those timed events. You know, you draw a steer that stops. You draw, you know, you miss, you know. That, and that's interesting, too, but the rough stock makes a huge difference. And Clarendon rough. College. It's all rough stock. It's uh, got a kid from Montana, yeah. won the bareback riding. Timberman kid whose uncle Kelly was a world champion. His dad, Chris, a uh, Ram Circuit finalist, yeah. whatever they call it now. Um, and all the Sam Peterson. I mean, they're they're bareback riders and bronc riders. Yeah. And they won the, the nation. Little Clarendon College. Second place, a complete contrast, McNeese State. Mm-hmm. A, um, you know, FCF school in football. Yep. They played Montana State last year. A four-year university. Uh, a school that doesn't have a lot of funding. We talked to a young man that had a Cade Saunier who probably is going to make the NFR and the bareback yeah. riding, yeah. telling us about his program, even though a pretty major four-year university, un- university they're digging up money to feed their practice stock. Yep. Um, not a lot of money there, but just such the contrast of schools and, it is yeah. interesting yeah. to me. And the contrast of you know, competitors and McNeese had, you know, their men's team was so tough. Most of them rough stock, but you did have some time to bet, you know, your, your reserve champion um, bulldogger was from McNeese. McNeese, Yeah. Um, Really good women's team. Their women's team was first or second in the region. So it's really interesting um, to see the, the difference in these championship colleges, um, their programs, their competitors, all of that. So then you talked because you were, you were starting to bring something up, the diversity of kids. He has somebody like, I'll throw Paige out there, mm-hmm. our, your sister. She wins the nation in the go time. Paige really, she's passionate about her event, but not as passionate like you about rodeo in general in the big picture of her life. Yeah. In a sense, she you'd used it to pay for her education. She, Paige, to put it simple, Paige likes to win. And she yeah. found something that she could work her butt off and be the best at. And and it got her through school. She's so passionate about school. And, you know, where I'm 
my passion is the Western sports industry, and I'll probably always be in the rodeo world in some way, shape, or form, you know, and um, it is interesting, you know, you have Paige who, she won the nation on Saturday, and she moved to Boston on Tuesday, and then yeah. you have you have the kids that won the nation on Saturday, and they were in Reno on Sunday, Yeah, and it's just so, you have the kids that are going to be, Paige is going to be working in a hospital in December, and somebody like, um, Tacey Matthews or Cade Sonia is going to be at, in the Thompson Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your dog's being noisy, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. Kincaid Henry. Kincaid. That's makes the, uh, wins rounds at the NFR last December. Yeah. He is now two consecutive times. He's won the college national championship. Tristan Hutchings. Tristan Hutchings. Won four rounds. Of the won four rounds in the bull riding at the NFR. He's now won the bull riding title in, the co- in college rodeo two times. Why? For one, I think the honor of having a college national championship is great. Yeah. They're getting some schooling out of it, but they're going to, they're leaving. They finished at the college finals and they're going rodeo. And it's interesting because you have such, you have those kids that have either already made the NFR or are going to make the NFR this year. Probably at least five that were at Casper going to be yeah. in Vegas. And then you have the kids like Paige, you have, uh, we have a friend, Opal Harkins, that just graduated law school while college rodeo. Her boyfriend is in medical school, college rodeo. And so it's very interesting, the different dynamics and the different, you know, the different ways people use college rodeo. You yeah. Know. Uh, you were, did a lot of recruiting mm-hmm. at Montana State. Yeah. So you have four-year universities like Montana State. By the way, there are two Division One universities in which rodeo is a part of the athletic department, operates under the athletic department. One of those is Montana State. The other is the University of Wyoming. Yep. Is it popularity? Well, you look at the two states, Montana and Wyoming. It makes complete sense. It does. And it's interesting because I always thought, I loved being a part of the athletic department at Montana State. I thought it made a huge difference for our program. It was so fun to be a coach. It's interesting hearing the other side of it, too, because I talked, you know, some people like that their program isn't under athletics because so many rodeo programs are under the College of Agriculture or Animal Science, and they say that that then rodeo becomes that college's or that department's football program. Yeah, that makes sense. Number one priority. So it it is interesting, and I think it's very case by case, but it is interesting to look at both sides of it. I think you're lucky at Montana State that rodeo does – Game, you know, it does have some traction under the athletic department, mm-hmm. but I could see that. But it uh, rodeo has become synonymous with the ro- with the football team, yeah. riding well, the horses down the field. Yes, it's- exactly. And you know, Montana State rodeo team is huge. Wyoming, it's the third highest revenue generator at sponsorship dollars. It goes football, men's basketball, and then rodeo. So it's it is interesting the potential rodeo has for schools. And how it can affect something like an athletic department. I think it's just very interesting how different it is at different places. Okay, so there's four-year schools like Montana State. Talked about Wyoming, you know, Mm -hmm. Idaho State there, McNeese State, Sam Houston. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Texas A&M, Texas Texas Tech, Tech, uh, South Dakota State, a lot of them. Um, I've heard people say, well, these four-year schools got such a big advantage over us two-year schools because of the dollars available. Yes, scholarship dollars. But you've, Some, it's, yeah. you know, uh, this is with all due respect to rough stock guys. You have hell getting rough stock guys to Montana State. Yeah, and to go back to, you know, two points with the, the, the four-year universities. I think people just assume since they're four-year universities, they have dollars. And some of the biggest rodeo schools in the country don't even give scholarships. You know, Texas A&M is a club sport, you know, and there's some big state universities that they, their coaches don't even get paid. And so I think that's interesting. But then it's hard to get kids to go somewhere like like Montana State, for example. We don't have very many online programs. Like there are quite a few four-year universities that that kids can go to and go online and go rodeo. We are like, you got to go to Montana State and you pretty much got to go to school all year. And that's a hard thing to get get rough stock for, I think, a number of reasons. I think your, your longevity is a bareback rider, saddle bronc rider, bareback rider is less. So when you're... 18 to 24 years old, that's kind of your chance to go on the road a little bit. Mm. And, uh, and a know, lot of college rodeo, look, those college rodeo kids, those Clarendon kids, 
I mean, yeah, they're taking school. They're enrolled in school and taking school, but they're also down in Texas where they can get they on can bucking horses every weekend and probably a lot of online stuff. Yeah. And, and, and they can go, they can fly, you know, they can, they were going flying from, there was a bunch of them flying from Casper to Reno. So it's, it's just, it's a different in a lot of ways and they can do both, but they need to be somewhere where school lets them do both. And yeah. It's hard at these four year universities to keep them. You got to go to school, you man. You got to go to school. I always said you can only be a college national champion if you know actually where the campus is. That's mean. They, everybody does, but I uh, think it's a good idea. No, I've had somebody no. tell me they don't know where the campus is. Yeah, you did at one time say have somebody tell you that. Yeah, he'd Trey never, Yates. Trey Yates never <laughs> been to the campus, but again, they have a lot of online stuff and yeah. Montana State. Those kind of schools, you got to be. We're calling out Trey Yates and of our team rover right now. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Um, so yeah, that that's interesting to me. It's. Uh, one of the fun things I remember sitting at the the three days of slack like, at the college finals, not to get into this, but they run two complete go rounds before there's a paid performance for people to come and watch. Yeah. And then the rest of the week is all the third go round. Yeah. So everybody's on the same page, but sitting there with a phone Googling where colleges yeah. are, uh, Iowa, Cent <clears throat> Iowa Central. That was a big, there was a, they had a lot of kids. And their coach was coach of the year. Coach of the year. You know, Missouri Valley College. Bareback uh, Rider U, they call it. Bareback them. Rider U. Yeah. And all of those, what, what, which one was Bulldog or U for a while? Northwest or oh, Southwest? Northwest Southwest Oklahoma, was. Northwest Oklahoma North, State. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so there, so you start Googling where they all are and it's very interesting. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, it's interesting too, the different levels of like, commitment from coaches in the programs in general too because you have places where it's a very full-time job for the coaches and you have places where the coaches are off rodeo and with kids on their team too yeah it's just very interesting the diversity where the college there. rodeo coach also makes the nfr and the yeah. steer wrestling or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, tough to do that at montana state but. yeah <laughs> it was tough. i haven't roped in like a year <laughs> uh so you talked about revenue dollars mm -hmm. dollars generated sponsorship there's a reason you know that yes because you have a new job yep. uh tell us what um learfield sports that title that company i hear it the only way i know learfield is today's today's broadcast brought to you by learfield sports mm -hmm. what is learfield sports Learfield Sports is huge. Um, they own the multimedia rights at hundreds of schools across the country. Um, for example, Bobcat Sports Property is a branch of Learfield at Bozeman, and they sell all the sponsorships for the basketball games, the football games, the, the athletic department. Um, you know, they, they have the multimedia rights. They handle TV deals. They handle production. Um, so they're already in place at hundreds of schools doing football programs, basketball programs, all that. Well... They saw a niche where, you know, college rodeo is kind of excluded, it, and uh, they want to help grow the sport. I think there's definitely potential there, and so they started, launched, um, it was announced last week, Learfield College Rodeo, and their goal is, um, our goal, I'm the new operations coordinator, is to really elevate college rodeo as a whole, and some of these schools, you know, they want to make the SEC of rodeo essentially you know these these four-year schools um starting initially where Learfield is already in place um so places like Montana State University Wyoming but then also branching out um but really focusing on f four-year universities uh, there's some other Learfield well you got Learfield schools Cal Poly Cal Poly so there's three right now that are signed in Learfield College Rodeo it's Cal Poly Wyoming and Montana State and um, working closely with some some more, um, and the goal is to have ten to fifteen by next spring. So when you say sign them, does that mean Learfield wants to help generate dollars for their programs? Yes. So there there's essentially three buckets. Um, there's the bucket where we are going to gen help generate. Um, revenue, sales, sponsorship dollars for each individual program. So when we signed with Montana State University, we made out a contract where Learfield is going to 
sell the sponsorships for their spring rodeo. They are going to generate the sponsorship revenue. They're going to be in charge of signage, any production, um, any sponsorship production um, and fulfillment um, to help generate revenue for the programs themselves. Um, The second bucket, bucket is then, you know, national sponsorships where we can say, hey, look at Montana State, Wyoming, Cal Poly, Idaho State, Colorado State, um, they are Learfield College Rodeo. I'm going to go pitch that to somebody and get a big sponsorship that then can be spread amongst these Learfield College Rodeo schools. And the third is then starting a rodeo series, you know, starting these tournament or playoff or however we decide um, best to do it, rodeos that are strictly for these college programs that have – fallen under the Learfield umbrella these four years. Does that give schools who are hesitant an incentive to go? You're going to say, hey, we're going to, I'm just going to invent one in my head. We're going to have a rodeo uh, at the South Point in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Cal Poly's coming, Wyoming's coming, Montana State's coming, Colorado State. Well, we'd like to go, well, you're not a Learfield, you haven't signed with us. Yeah. I mean, there's a little, is there a little Yeah, and use it's of exciting that? because it's not just like, oh, it's another rodeo. Like, we're going to put a ton of effort into this, and this is going to be nationally televised, and we the goal is to make it unlike any other rodeo, you know, to make it a very unique college experience, and I think that's huge to for these select schools to be a part of, and there's going to be some money up, too. Hmm. You have eligibility? After. I do have one. <laughs> you do. You have a COVID <laughs> year stashed year. <laughs> away somewhere. I'm a little old, though. Uh, but then there's those school. Uh, so anybody. So what you're doing is handling the ones that are already with Learfield, and then you can you can snowball it a little and say. Yeah. What? What? Where it's advantageous for us at the moment is there's already sales teams in place at all these rodeo or at all these schools. It's already working for these schools. We are just now adding rodeo under the umbrella. So Montana State has Bobcat Sports Properties. Bobcat Sports Properties now is just expanding into rodeo. So it's something that has worked. I mean, Learfield. Is you huge. have when you go to these other schools, you can say, "Look, look at Wyoming." But but look at, you know, if I'm going to Montana State, I don't even have to say look at Wyoming. I can say look at Montana State. Look at what Bobcat Sports Properties has done for the football program or the basketball program. You know, it, it's something that has already worked within that school, which is right. so nice, too. You yeah, know? you don't have to point to rodeo necessarily. You, yeah, you, these people know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's been huge. You know, Wyoming's program has grown significantly and have huge sponsor revenue. And they're not even in the most ideal location. You know, we sell 14,000 tickets at this the field house, and they can fit 1,000 in that arena. But it's just amazing what, you know, the resources Learfield has, what they can do for a program like Why that. Why don't they move it? Can they not move it to their basketball arena? It's conversation. <laughs> <laughs> See? Like, yeah. But like a, uh, you know, and I've talked to you about this, a Western Montana, and I'm partial because I mm-hmm. went there somehow maybe they come up and say, all right, what do we need to do here? Yeah. We want, you know, eventually. Yeah, then there's conversations of how then we can use sales teams or me or somebody then to, to, to um, you know, expand to places maybe like Western. I've talked to McNeese. You know, they've been on our radar a little bit. So just it's, it's cool, hopefully, what we can do. And th- the fun thing about it is we already have the resources. We're, we're starting a new company kind of, but not – you know, we have the resources, we have what has worked, um, we have the rights, so that's really exciting. Does that, uh, because I'm moving to a different kind of job in Western sports too, does it scratch your itch of competition and being yeah. in rodeo a little bit? Because you're, all the, the stuff you're doing now in the coaching, but now in uh, starting, kind of helping start up this involvement it's kind of competition it is it's it's a game it's and i'm so passionate you know really the difference a lot me and my sister are very different you know she was passionate about winning i'm very passionate about the western sports industry and rodeo and growth and progress and i think this is like the perfect place to go with growth in rodeo because i've always said 
almost every job interview I've ever had, they ask what my goal is. I say, I want to be a part of growth in the sport, Mm -hmm. in the industry. And I think this is the perfect place because you can really amplify the Western sports industry. And, you know, everybody loves Yellowstone right now, especially. But it's extra fun. To go, hey, you want to cheer for your favorite sports sports team? Go cheer for their rodeo team. You yeah. know, you can kind of – it's a double-edged sword a little bit where you can kind of – somebody scrolling through TV and they see, oh, Texas Tech's rodeo. You know, where if somebody's already a fan of that team, it's a little easier Wait, to Wait, team in. stuff in rodeo – team stuff in rodeo and bull riding is dumb. <laughs> I mean, you, you read the internet? <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> but it is, it is unique in a way where – you can get behind a team. You know, I use Bozeman, for example. We have a good pro rodeo in the summer, but our college rodeo is unreal. That's true. That Well, there's a different energy. Like, yeah. Listen you, go to, cheer, yeah. you go cheer for the Bobcats. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to make this unique and where this can be huge growth for our industry because once you bring rodeo fans in, they're rodeo fans. But you kind of got to wait. You kind of got to bring them mm. in. By the way, I should correct myself. I was being sarcastic on the – Teams is dumb. I was I was yeah. quoting. Yeah. You sarcastic? Yeah, me? <laughs> but it is funny. Even though it's different, the college rodeo and when you, there's a team competing, it is different than the um, PBR teams where it's direct. But during the rough stock, yeah. uh, I, I made a joke uh, that some of the old timers don't like PBR teams. A, a couple of them have told me, I don't like all that leaning over the chute cheering and high five and... For one, the Wright brothers have been doing that for years. Yeah. At the college finals, that's the first time this year I've seen. There was guys throwing hats in the arena. It is a it's team. team. It's team. Well, it's individual accomplishments that contribute to the success of the team. And it's there already. It's in college rodeo. Yeah. Well, and the fun thing about college rodeo, we're not just making up teams. There's our and not that not that the PBR no but that, no but it's, there are in, there are established teams there are the Texas Tech Red Raiders there are the Sam Houston State you know Bearcats there there are those teams exist already and people are huge fans of these people teams. we're not inventing a fan base for a new team the there fan bases the are fan there base. it's we just in, need yeah to make the rodeo programs bigger you uh you had a good opportunity speaking of that you had a good opportunity this year a guy we know Mike Hope at Bozeman, Montana, owns the world-famous Rockin' R Bar. Yeah. And he said, why don't you sell some merchandise? Yep. And you sold ball caps. I don't have one with me. Oh, I have one. Uh, is, it, since uh, I, it was just winter, wasn't it? You, did you start yeah. in the fall? It was winter. Oh, yeah. I think and I took him a box of hats. And, or, so sure. how many... Now, he sells Rock and R bar ads, Bobcat yeah. stuff. How many Bobcat rodeo ball caps did he sell? Hundreds. I thought he sold thousand, like 22. Something. As, as many as I had because I'm out. <laughs> but it's like you said, Bobcat fans are there. Yeah. But it says Montana State rodeo. rodeo. And what a, when people come in the Rock and R and they're a tourist, they're skiers, yeah. and they look up there and they go, that same Montana State Rodeo, how cool is it for, for them to fly back to wherever they're from yeah. after skiing in Bozeman at Montana State Rodeo? Ball cap. Well, and people can say what they want about Yellowstone, but that's dang sure not hurting, A, Montana State, or rodeo in general, you know. You know ask Wrangler. Ask, try to get a straw hat from a uh, hat yeah. company right now. Yeah. Because they can't keep up. No. So, yeah. I know. Um, well... Good luck. I know it's sad to not be coaching, but you're now you get to go around to all these schools. Yeah, and, and I, I loved coaching, but I'm really passionate about growth. Are you sick school. of college kids, Shell? Um, <laughs> no. I understand. No, I'm not. I just am ready for the next step. Yeah. Um, I would love to go back to coaching. You know, if the opportunity ever arose yeah. you know, in the future, I, I, I did truly have a passion for it, but I think – this is a really exciting step for our industry and for my goals. You know, I, f- I really feel like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I will say the college national finals needs a better TV deal. Yeah. It needs a lot. It and does. And nothing against it. No, but I just think, it needs... I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with college rodeo and the CNFR. I, I don't, I think they do a great job, but I think there's so much potential. Yeah. And I think so many people just think, 
the CNFR is great and college rodeo is great and nothing needs to change. But I think there is so much potential, and I'm hoping I can be a part yeah. of some growth. It just, uh, I, I've been big on this back when the NFR wasn't even live on TV. I'm like, can you imagine the Super Bowl being delayed two hours? Or, you know, PBR finals, whatever. It has to be live. I laughed kind of all week, because, and it was just what the announcers were given to read. Hey, set your... Uh, DVR to record ESPNU August 14th. Mm -hmm. That's when the championship round is going to be on ESPN. Go check it out. Well, I'm here yeah. right now. Yeah. And so that, I think there's a better, I don't know what the solution is. It's easy for me to say. Yeah. There's a, there there's solutions. a better solution out there for, the, yeah. especially for the college national finals. It needs to be readily, readily available for people to sit in their living room with all the, uh, honestly, with all the crappy rodeos that are being thrown out there on TV, the college national finals every night should be yeah. on TV. That's yeah. all there is to it. Yeah. And I did say crappy rodeos because a lot of them are. Yeah. It's just the way it is, man. No. I can say it. My name's on the sign. See this? See right over my, yeah. see that? Yeah. That's my name, Shel, mm -hmm. in case you didn't know. Okay. No Thanks for coming to town. Thanks. You look good in your, look at me. It's just automatic. I straighten up. Thanks. And uh, look Look at layered short sleeves, just like her dad, because she was cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's June twentieth, and it's rained every day. It is. Uh, it's miserable yeah. in Billings, Montana today. So good job. Thanks. I'm proud of you. Thank you. And uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, I hope. I don't know. I hope as we sat here, people will go, "Wow, college rodeo! It it is big, and mm -hmm. it is something that." If you, I, I ran into some people in the hotel lobby in Casper and they said, excuse me, sir. They're, they were not from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. We were told there's rodeo right. Cause I, right down the hill, I stay right by the event center there. Uh, you think we could walk up and get a ticket? And it was kind of earlier in the week. I said, absolutely. Like general admission. Yeah. And I saw them there mm -hmm. when they walked in and they had a blast. Here they were touring through, stopped to got a hotel in Casper, Wyoming, went to the rodeo and experienced yeah. That. Well, and I hope what people take away, you know, when we compare all these programs and the different types of kids that are college rodeo, I hope people appreciate every single part of college rodeo because you have the Clarendon and colleges where you drive into town and the first thing you see is a billboard um, with the Clarendon National Championship College Rodeo Team. And then you have places like McNeese where they're working their butts off and have one of the greatest programs with not a lot of resources, but they are treating it like an athletic sport. And then you have somewhere like Montana State where it's in the athletic department. And I just hope – I think, you know, it's, it's very unique, the fact that we have so many different types of places, and I hope people appreciate things yeah. about every type of place. And – Women have been breakaway open in college rodeo forever. True. So, and a lot no, of them team rope in there. A lot of them team rope as well. So thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Episode 71. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.